Yes, you can drive electric cars perfectly well in the snow and ice. And to prove my point, I went to the Arctic to power slide some electric cars across frozen lakes. It was great fun, sure, but it really proved to me just how capable these cars are in the winter. So fine, driving an EV like a lunatic on a frozen lake isn't exactly typical driving. It was perfectly safe, of course, but it was really more about having fun and trying to go sideways and hold some nice drifts before inevitably physics came and kicked my ass. But I also drove many miles on public roads, completely snowbound in northern Sweden. And even in an EV, it just felt very normal. The car's heavy weight and the low center of gravity from the floor-mounted battery packs mean that cars like this feel incredibly planted on the road, while an electric motor's instant torque means that you've got great acceleration without any needless wheel spinning. I felt safe driving it, even on completely snow-covered surfaces, and even when we came on some reindeer who were just lying down in the middle of the road, we're able to stop without any drama and crucially without any hard to explain reindeer shaped dents in the car. So why are there so many misconceptions around driving EVs in the winter? Well, a quick Google search on the topic will bring up endless news reports, YouTube videos, Reddit threads, all providing inaccurate or misleading information, all of which basically tells you that if you want to drive a car in the snow, you're gonna have to get a gas-powered one. But the reality is that all cars struggle more in the winter. EV batteries are typically around 25% less efficient in colder temperatures, but a gas-powered car's engine is also around 20% less efficient. The biggest drain on an EV's battery comes from warming up the cabin and the batteries. In a gas car, that warmth comes from the excess heat created by the engine that naturally gets fed back around the car. But an EV doesn't generate that excess heat, so all of the warming of the car and the battery packs has to be done artificially using electric heaters, and that can be a big drain on your available range. But most modern EVs now offer a preconditioned function that essentially allows you to warm the car up while it's still plugged in, and that means that you still have all of your available range when you come to drive. More recent models also feature heat pumps, and these operate just like the same ones that you might have seen inside your home or an office building, and effectively just move heat around in a much more efficient way resulting in a much lower drain on your car's battery. But range anxiety remains one of the biggest barriers to widespread EV adoption, and that's particularly the case in rural areas where individual journeys tend to be longer and the conditions can be more challenging. But technology is catching up fast. Today's EVs pack significantly bigger battery packs, and in fact the average range of EVs has more than tripled in the last 10 years. Some models today even providing as much as 500 miles of driving range between charges. So even if your car does lose some efficiency in the colder weather, you've still got so much to use. Then there's the fact that the number of publicly available chargers has more than doubled in the last four years, so even if you do need to charge partway through your journey, there are more chargers to choose from. And most modern EVs also feature regenerative braking, which actually puts energy back into your batteries as you slow down. Some estimates even suggest that using regenerative braking like this can put as much as 20% of your range back into the batteries. And that goes a long way to accounting for any range loss due to the cold weather. It means that today, long distance electricity electric journeys, whatever the conditions, can be a breeze. I even found this out last year when I drove over 4,000 miles across Europe, facing everything from desert tracks to snow-covered forest roads. The car's long range and the wide availability of fast chargers meant that this journey was just as simple as it would have been in any car. But my time on the snow and ice in Sweden just proved to me even more that EVs can be superb in the winter. And if more proof were needed, you just need to look at Norway, a country where despite its extreme winter conditions, more than 90% of new cars sold last year were electric. So if you're looking for a new car, don't think that when the mercury drops, you need to opt for a gas guzzler. An electric car could suit you just fine. What are your thoughts? Have you had any winter EV driving experience yourself? Do make sure to leave your comments in the box below and check out the video description for a lot more information.